Welcome back, fun fans. We're here for yet another episode in the shit podcast here on the Loudmouth MMA Podcast Network, as well as Combat Press and every other platform that simulcasts the show. I'm your host, Riley Contact, here yet for another episode here. Uh, before we introduce our guest, of course, we want to plug our sponsor. If you're in the greater Illinois area and looking for home construction and home improvement projects, head over to Facebook.com and check out Cornelius & Sons. As for Raul, again, that is Cornelius & Sons on Facebook.com. All right, today we have another great guest on the show. Uh, he will be fighting this weekend at Bellator 255, the first Bellator show of the year. Uh, he is a bantamweight. His name is CJ Hamilton. CJ, thank you for joining the show today, my friend. Thank you for having me. No problem, and you're uh, you're doing me a solid here because I wanted to get somebody fighting on this weekend's card, and uh, you know, not only and we'll talk about your fight in a little bit, but not only you're taking it on late notice too, so I'm sure you're you know even extra busy in the lead up to that fight. So, uh, so again, thank you for coming on. Uh, so the first thing we're going to touch on before we get to you specifically, there's a couple of uh, topics in the combat sports world. I think the biggest one that came out uh, in the previous week is that. Uh, former UFC women's bantamweight champion Misha Tate is actually returning to the UFC. It looks like she'll be resuming her career. It doesn't look like it's a one-off thing. It does look like she will be returning full-time. So uh, can you comment on her return, and how do you think she'll do, especially having been out so long, especially having two children? Uh, well, you know, uh, I don't have any kids, so I can't really comment on, like, you know, with her having two kids. What I can comment on is um, with her being out for so long, I feel like the game has somewhat evolved since she's left. Um, you know, she was in the era where Amanda Nunes was just now getting into the point where she started demolishing women. Um, and now I think, you know, it's going to be hard for her to get that title back just because Amanda Nunes is just leaps and bounds and uh, levels above all the other women in that division right now. Um, but, I mean, it's good to see her come back. You know, uh, you, you never know what could happen when people – make a comeback, you know, Michael Jordan made a comeback, uh, you know, and Mike Tyson also made a comeback too. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta, um, you gotta give her credit where credit's due, you know, she's getting back in there and doing the thing. So I applaud her for it. Um, I just, you know, is, is it going to be a real run again? I'm not sure, but you know, and time will tell. Yeah. And the interesting is, uh, you know, like you said, Tyson probably making another return, but uh, going past that, I mean, like, Misha Tate is actually has star power quality. You know, this isn't just your run-of-the-mill person. So, they, I mean, there's even more pressure on the fact that she has kind of a big name to live up to because she has had so much success in the sport. Yes, yes. And, I mean, everybody's going to still tune in. I mean, even myself, I'll still tune in to watch her. Um, you know, I think I saw the other day, I don't know if it was on Instagram or what, they were asking Dana if um, Ronda was coming back. And he was like, absolutely not, absolutely not. And, I mean, you know, I can I can wholeheartedly agree with him because especially with her, you know, she came in, she was it, and then she got dethroned, and then that person that dethroned her got dethroned. So it's just, you know, you know, like I said, maybe Misha – can do it, you know, like I said, Tom will only tell, so. Yeah, I think Ronda's made her money. I don't think she really needs to do the sport anymore either. Yeah, nah, nah, if I was Ronda, I'd be gone too. I'd be gone too. <laughs> So the other big news in co in combat sports, I mean, I consider wrestling a combat sport, obviously. I think a lot of people do. Is uh, Spencer Lee winning uh, the NCAA uh, Wrestling Championship with two blown ACLs? So there's, this will be a multi-pronged question. I'll start at the beginning. What, uh, what, Why are wrestlers such a different breed than everybody else? I mean, you watch this guy winning a, a, a high-level tournament with two blown-out ACLs, and then you see guys in other sports. I don't want to call out soccer in the NBA, but these guys flop. These guys look like they... In baseball as well, you know, they get little injuries and they're gone forever. So why are they such a different breed? Uh, uh, so as a wrestler myself, so I won two national championships um, back in 2007 and 2008. And, I, I like, I watch, I watch the NCAAs every year. I mean, I, it's March Madness to me. I could care less. Not to say I, don't, I, I have family members that play basketball. You know, I don't disrespect anyone's craft. If I could care less about basketball, March for me is NCAA season for wrestling. And I'm a Hawkeye fan. So um, I've been watching Spencer Lee for a while. Um, what people don't know is that he messed his knee up his senior year of high school. Um, he was going to be the first undefeated four-time Pennsylvania State champ. And he lost his match to his eventual teammate. Um, 
So what makes wrestlers very different from everybody else is that they they put their mind through the grind. Like I mean, the re- wrestling season is very very long. It's very very strenuous. Day in day out, you got to keep your diet good. You got to keep your weight down. You got you're in charge of your conditioning, and I mean, it, it's all on you. So if you want to be successful in, in that sport, it's all on you. So you have no one to blame. And I think with wrestling, you know. It, it breeds a lot of coachable guys because I, for one, I'm very, like, whatever my coach tells me to do, I'm going to do it, point blank, period. And, um, you know, like, just going through that grind of the season, I mean, it just it just makes a man out of you. And I, I believe that that's one of the best combat sports. If you were going to do MMA, it, it's been a great base for me, just not simply because of jujitsu. It, it literally is a combat sport. What other combat sport in high school or college can you name? You know what I mean? Um, that is literally just you and an opponent in a in a circle. Right. You know what I mean? So um, it, it just it 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 makes fighters. It breeds fighters. I, it's the world's greatest sport. I think it's the discipline that makes that makes wrestlers so so gritty. Yeah, and that, and that bled into my next question, which is perfect. But I, I think the funny thing is, is that what you described in terms of the training and the conditioning and, uh, of a wrestler when they when they get into that sport, it sounds a lot like the military, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think that's I agree. I think that's why they're so disciplined and they are so tough and they are so mentally strong. I mean, and don't get me wrong. Obviously, there's wrestlers who are mentally weak. I've seen them, but yeah. it's, it's it's a minority. Yes, yes, a hundred percent. And I mean, um, you know especially at the college level too. So um, I was NTA All-American as well. And I can tell you this, there's levels to it. Like, I mean, not to say that, you know, one school is better than another, but it, it depends on what's like the big tens, like that right there. I tell my kids that I coach, I'm like, you know, if you want to wrestle for a big 10 school, your mindset has to change now. You can't wait till you get to that school you can't wait till you get into high school like these guys are building themselves as little kids so you know it's it's i love it i love the discipline that it 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 takes to be a wrestler not everybody can wrestle you can try out but you i mean i i've seen a lot of guys especially when i was coming up like oh man i just don't like the singlet no nah, dude it has nothing to do with the singlet <laughs> like that 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 is a tough sport so Absolutely. And the last thing I'll mention on that is it's it's a it's it's a collegiate sport where I mean when people think of college athletes everyone thinks of division 1 which is of course is the, you know it's the cream of the crop obviously because then they think of you know basketball and football because those are all the guys that get drafted because there's so many colleges that don't have wrestling guys in division 2 and lower are still you know top level wrestlers even if they aren't in division 1. Yep, Juco Juco as well. Yep. Um you know I got I got recruited um, I went to Anderson University. That's where I won my um, NCAA. I mean, um, my NCAA All American. I got fifth, um, and and uh, their Division Two. And the, I signed with them. I got a call from Eric Guerrero. He was the associate assistant coach at the time under John Smith at Oklahoma State. And I was like, wow, like you know what I mean. But it was it was already too late. I already signed and whatnot. But um, yeah, I mean. At, at Division Two, like Kamara Usman, right. I watched him win a national championship with a broken hand. He had a soft cast on his hand, so it's like, don't don't like people look at. And yeah, of course, everybody's like Division One, like you said, but there are some killers in Division Two as well. So. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, like I said, because there's so many schools that just don't have wrestling. It bleeds down into the lower divisions. Now, let's talk about you specifically. you got a fight coming up. Now, before we talk about that fight, uh, you know, you've had a little bit of a layoff. You haven't fought since June of 2019. That was in Combate. Uh, you won a decision over DJ Fuente. So, uh, you know, it's, we're looking at almost we're at a 20-plus month layoff from a professional in-ring uh, you know, cage time and actual fight. Uh, how do you think that's going to affect you here? Do you think the layoff was helpful in recuperating your health, or do you think it's going to lead to cage rust? What do you think? Oh, I think it was very, very helpful for me because it gave me a chance to really focus on what I needed. To... I wasn't really, I didn't want to, I didn't want to lay off by no means. So mm-hmm. um, I got married in March uh, 2020, 
and we came back March, March, excuse me, March 7th, 2020, I got married. And uh, we went on our honeymoon on March 9th and came back and the world was shut down. Yeah. Oh, so, so COVID hit. And then um, even when states started opening up, starting to have, you know, um, events, we were looking for fights, but nobody, like, everybody were making up some excuse. So I was like, man, I'm just sitting here just, just grinding. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this time wisely. I'm going to work on the things that I need to work on. So I really think it's it's been very helpful, this, this whole, like, layoff. I've been just training, 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 six days a week. So, um, you know, I don't think it'll lead to any ring rust. Um, you know, I think that's, a, you know, my mentality is, you know, as long as I'm training, I'll be fine. Um, if I was sitting, if I was sitting on my butt and took this fight and tried to train in two weeks, then yes, I'd be like, oh, crap, my time would be off. But my time is there, my cardio is there, my strength is there. Um, everything is there. It's just, you know, time to show up and uh, show out next Friday. Absolutely, and like we said, you get the late call. You have a pretty hyped up opponent. You know, he's a top guy out of Russia. Uh, he was a champion in Russia. He's obviously a guy Bellator's high on. Uh, you know, he was you know big fanfare when he was signed. Uh, so can you just comment on Magomed Magomedov as an opponent, and uh, what do you think his weaknesses are that you're going to try and exploit? Um, you know what? To be honest with you, um, he's, gonna, he's a great opponent. It's going to be a war, man. I'm, I'm excited because... It's a win-win for me. It's a win-win because, you know, sometimes as athletes, we fight or, or we compete to the level that we're competing against. So sometimes if it's like a lower-level athlete, you kind of bring yourself down. Magomed's going to bring nothing but the best out of me, mm -hmm. um, just simply because of who he is and, you know, what, he, what he's done. So I'm excited. Um, you know, I, I don't see... Too many. He, I mean, he he comes from a great camp. I don't see too many holes. Um, they're very minuscule. So, like I said, it's gonna be a war. It's gonna be a war of wills. And uh, you know, I'm gonna go there to get my hand raised. I'm not going there just to be like, oh, I've made it. Like, cool. I got signed to Bellator. I, I I expected this because I've been working hard for the past eight plus years. When you work hard, things happen. So, um, you know, I'm not going there just to be like, oh, okay, well. I'm going to fold. No, 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 no. I'm going in there to beat this guy, and I can and I will beat this guy. So, um, you know, he, he's a formidable opponent, um, probably one of the toughest guys maybe I've ever fought. I've, I fought Casey Kinney as well, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a tough kid too as the UFC sees. So uh, I'm, I'm ready. I've been forged in the fire, and I'm, I'm ready to go back into it. I love it. Now, the fight with Magomedov, and you may not know this, I don't know if you know the order, but is that going to be a main card or a preliminary card bout? Um, I know, so um, I, he was supposed to fight my training partner, Jared Scoggins. Right. And um, they were going to be the last prelim. Mm -hmm. That's how Tapology had it listed. They were yeah. going to be the last prelim before the main card. So I don't know. I'm not, I'm not completely sure. Um, I really don't. I would rather just go ahead and get it over with. Let's just let's, – I, I, I hate – you know, oh well, you're you're like the third on the main card. Like, no, let's let's fight. Let's get this done, so I can so I can you know cash my check and let's go home. You know what I'm saying? So, absolutely. And I mean, this card is absolutely stacked. Like we said, it's Bellator's comeback. Uh, it's their return. I guess well, it wouldn't be a return, but it's Scott Coker's return to Showtime. You know, mm -hmm. you have a lot of fights on here and a lot of good fights. And I think the compliment to the fight that you're having uh, with Magomedov is that it's, you know, clearly a fight that could end up being one of the fight of the nights just based stylistically. Yes, yes, I completely agree. Um, you know, we're not going to go in there and, like, play around, man. Like, we're, <laughs> we're going to go in there and put on a show. I know it. I feel it. And it just, like, I've been the past week. I've been like, all right, just calm down. I don't want to get too amped up. Um, I was doing my heart rate training this morning, and uh, my, my strength and conditioning coach is like, all right, well, when your heart rate gets about to, like, the 90 margin, we'll, we'll go run it back. And I'm just sitting there, and he's like, relax. And this is at 530 this morning. <laughs> relax, relax. I'm just like, oh, I'm just subconsciously thinking. I'm not, like, you know what I mean? So, right. But uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. 
Yeah, it, it, like we said, you know, obviously Skogans dropping out was was a bummer. But I mean, again, guys like me who saw you step in, we we're like, well, this is gonna be a great fight regardless. So you know, g good luck to you, obviously, and that we'll be watching and again, guys. This will be on Showtime. Um, I believe the prelims will either be on the YouTube or the Bellator app. I'm not sure yet. We'll uh, post that when we post the show. Uh, now let's uh, you know let's move away. We'll swivel to the rest of the card. Uh, we had talked before. We'll talk about two fights specifically on the cards. So before we get to that main event, this is a pretty important heavyweight bout. You got Matt Mitrione, former NFL player, former UFC, former The Ultimate Fighter, uh, former Bellator tournament participant. I mean, he's been at all. Uh, he's taking on top prospect Tyrell Fortune, who comes from the world of wrestling. I, I am sure you're familiar with him as well. <laughs> oh yeah, so, man. Uh, Tyrell Tyrell's talks, man. Um. You know, Matt Mitrione, he's a vet. He's seen it, you know, and, and there's something to say about that. When you're a veteran in the sport, when you've seen so many styles and you, you've you fought so many top, top guys, it, it kind of, it's like almost like an ace in the hole. You're like, look, man, like, even though this guy has all these credentials, I've seen it already. I've seen it already. So it, it, it it's like almost he has nothing to lose. But Tyro... Tyrell's going there to take his head. I know he's going in there. He's not He's not going to respect anything that Mitrione's doing. So I'm excited for that fight as well. Two big guys going in there, the throwdown. Um, I think Tyrell can squeak it out if if Mitrione goes in there and, and you know, can, can he can be reckless at times. Um, but I, I think Tyrell can squeak it out. Um, but if Mitrione comes in there game, it, it could be another – fight of the night candidate besides me and Magomedo. Yeah, no doubt. And I think the most interesting aspect of this fight, you know, minus the fact that you have Mitrione's experience versus Fortune's, you know, raw talent, you know, from being such a great wrestler, is the level level of athleticism that both of these guys have as heavyweights. That Mitrione moves around like a guy 100 pounds lighter than he is. Yes. And obviously Fortune's a world-class athlete as well. Yes. Yes, so, yes. So, I mean, that's that's the most interesting thing. And obviously Mitrione's known for his hands. So, you know, Fortune's going to have to get inside those uh, th those paws before he tries to send him for a ride. Exactly. And, and, and you know, Fortune has good kicks too. So, mm. you know, Fortune could keep him at range with his kicks and feints and kind of get, you know, Mitrion in a, in a striking battle. And Mitrion can – Mitrion has to be conscious of not being overextended sure. because once you, once you overextend with good wrestlers, I mean, there it goes. That, that's takedown city. So – Okay. Um, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a great fight. Absolutely, like I said, up, up and down this whole card is good. So, um, and then the main event, obviously, the featherweight title is on the line. Uh, we got Patricio. They call him Patricio Pitbull. I call him Patricio Freddy. I, 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 it's a weird way to list his name. Taking on Emmanuel Sanchez. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and I'll look this up while you answer, uh, this is a rematch. How do you see this bout going? And uh, it's uh, Sanchez, man. I, I've watched him. For a while, and I, I watched them both for a while. I've always been a very big fan of Sanchez, just the tenacity. Yeah. Uh, Pitbull is more controlled chaos. Sanchez is like, you know, just like we were talking about with Fortune, it's like he is coming at, he's firing on all cylinders. Absolutely. Uh, he can get it done on the ground, he can get it done standing, he can be bleeding, he's coming back. Like, he's, he's more of like a Terminator. Besides, instead of like a predator, right? You know, what I mean? and um, so like you're gonna ha you're gonna have to kill this man, um, pit bull, same exact thing, um, so <laughs> once again, like it's, it's gonna be another. This there's literally, there's literally this whole car could be fights in a night, like a bunch of candidates. Really, it's like who can you choose? You like you got Jason Jackson on the card. Yep. He's he's fighting uh, Neem uh, Gracie. Yep. So it's like okay, that can be fire night. Tyrell and Mitrione, Pitbull and Sanchez. It just the list goes on. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. So I'm just glad that I'm just glad that they're at featherweight. Let's just say that <laughs> I don't have to deal with that. Yeah. No problem. Let them have. 
Yeah, absolutely, especially how dangerous P- uh, Patricio has gotten and, and in recent years. I mean, he was good, but, man, he is he is something else now. And, and I agree with your, your breakdown on Sanchez. I mean, talk about a guy who doesn't nearly get enough his credit as he should. I mean, he yeah. went to decision with Pitbull last time. Uh, yeah. And it, since then and before then was just destroying everybody in, in impressive fashion. In that, in that span of, like, last five or six fights, he has two triangle chokes, so he's dangerous yeah. everywhere. He, he, th- that man, Sanchez, I mean, it's pretty much like he, you line him up for him, he's going to knock him down. So, and with a guy like that, that is scary. And with Pitbull, he's like the same way. You line him up, I'll knock him down. So, it, I, I can't wait to be a part of this card. I can't wait to, I can't wait to fight on this card. And, uh, you know, I'm excited. Yeah, Bellator 255 is going to be insane. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely one I think everyone should tune in for if you have Showtime. Definitely watch it. Again, up and down the card. Outstanding. So, CJ, we want to thank you so much for coming on the show. This is the time where I will give you the floor. Uh, If you want to shout anybody out or give your thanks, please, the floor is yours. All right. Well, first off, I want to thank my uh, my school, my gym, Contemporary Martial Arts, my coaches, Chuck Cawthon, uh, Carolina Cawthon, uh, Jim Robinson, my jiu-jitsu coach, Jimmy Fowler, Revolution Martial Arts. Uh, I'd like to thank my sponsors, the Fight Doctors, Chris Chittum, Ari Kramer. Um, I would like to thank my manager, Orrin Hodak, KO Reps, one of the best managers in the game. Um, thanking all my training partners, my family, my friends. I want to thank my wife for sticking with me through this whole process. Uh, she knows how big of a roller coaster ride this has been, and I hate roller coasters, so you can imagine how I've been feeling the past couple weeks. But, um, you know, you guys tune in next Friday. Uh, it's going to be a hell of a card. Excellent, and I will plug myself real quick, guys. Every week this show on Loudmouth MMA Podcast Network, Combat Press, you can catch it on my Facebook, Twitter, everywhere else, Apple Play, everything that's caught. Uh, head to MMA Intel. We have new scouting reports every week, new rankings, updates, everything you want to see. Uh, and that's pretty much it because you guys have seen the show enough to know where all my shit is. So, uh, CJ, thank you so much again for coming on the show. Really, really interesting stuff today. Um, so for CJ Hamilton, I'm Riley Contact saying continue watching the fights, continue watching the show, and go fuck yourselves. Good night.